Welcome, everybody, to The Social Dig, the greatest underrated show on the World Wide Web. I am your host, Mr. Rob G., and as always, we're going to be digging into the topics that keep you talking and the talk that keeps you thinking. So come on in, kick your feet up, get an ice-cold beverage, and get ready to join the conversation. Once again, we're back with another late night calling show. Uh, I think last one we did was the week before last. We had a really excellent show. We had uh, Puck Elf come up on the stage, and uh, we had a great conversation. I think that went very well. Um, you know, talking about humanity and, and uh, a lot of different aspects of this phenomena, and it's good to hear other people's theories. So I'm so glad that we were able to do that. Um, and it's the kind of conversations that I love to have here at the Social Dig. Just period. Anything that moves the needle, as I've said many times before, anything that helps move the needle is a conversation uh, that I would like to have. So if you guys have any suggestions on any topics, anything that we uh, should be covering here, definitely let us know um, because we want to make sure that when you look back through this catalog of conversations that we have done things like tangible things uh, that help move the needle. So with that being said, we just came off a fantastic after hours with none other than the filthiest of the filthy, Mr. Dirty Filth. If you missed that, you definitely want to go over to Space Style Radio uh, and check that out. Awesome conversation. We had Travis join us um, and kind of really just talking about uh, art and how, you know, it is a, a way to deliver a message, as we've seen throughout history, historic reference shows, all sorts of uh, storyboard pictographs and, and petroglyphs, hieroglyphs, um, drawings and things that were supposed to relay a message or, a, a, as far as we understand, relay a message of things that were happening back at a particular time in history. And how important that is, because if we lose our language tomorrow, if we have some sort of, you know, uh, drastic event, some sort of catastrophic event that wipes us all out, you know, it might be just some of these stories, uh, the visuals that last and kind of, you know, start to retell the story uh, that, that, that of a life that we live. So. I think it was awesome, very awesome angle, and uh, that show should hopefully do pretty well. We have a lot of Filth fans, and I know they enjoyed it, so I enjoyed it as well. Um, but what we're going to do here at the Social Dig, it's up to you guys, right? Because you guys are the voice, and uh, we do this show so that you could come up and voice some of your experiences, talk about some things that are on your mind. It's kind of what this platform is for. We can talk about anything you want. Um, you could definitely direct us down a path, and we'll go ahead and do that, or we'll just see where the conversation takes us. Uh, let me go ahead and make sure that we have everything set up as we welcome people into uh, the chat here at the Social Dig. Let me go ahead and make sure we do that. And make sure that we have our phone line set up, because I know I've rearranged a couple things here recently. And I want to make sure that I have what we need, which I do. All right. So with that being said, let's go ahead and uh, welcome everyone in who's come in from the after hours. Uh, it's going to be Joe Monk. Joe Monk, thanks for coming on in. Appreciate you showing up. We got welcome to the show. Uh, appreciate you coming on in. Lee, appreciate you. Uh, we got Tamar, man coming on in. Appreciate you. We got saying, where's my wrench? No, I'm actually about to hand out some more wrenches here. Um, Cause I think it's at least a consistent enough crowd here uh, that we can definitely do that. So uh, re remind me to do that before we leave here. I'm going to do that. And let's see, Brandon, appreciate you coming on in. Thanks for showing up. Yeah. Calling show is a calling show only on Sundays. Really? It depends. It really depends on how I'm feeling because, uh, you know, doing the after hour show, getting all, all the stuff it takes to get that going. Um, you know, the time is limited on what I'm able to do over here. So I do it when I can. The energy is there. We were doing it every Saturday and Sunday. We may go back to that pretty soon here. 
Uh, but I just want to make sure that we aren't here just having random conversations, that we're having conversations that actually matter and move the needle, right? So um, as long as we have good topics to cover, then yeah, I'm, we can do this Saturday and Sunday. That's the only thing holding that up, just so you know. And um, yeah, it's totally allowed. I think we need to advertise Social Dig more during SOR if it's allowed. It is allowed. I've just chosen not to do it at this point because I want to make sure after hours gets uh, to where it needs to be before I start trying to promote this channel over there. But I think we're right there. So I'm, I'm going to start uh, advertising this stuff at the beginning of after hours. Uh, that'll be happening coming up soon. Um, but I just want to make sure we're having a consistent pipeline. And the way things go over here, right, because I do interviews on after hours, and I do them here too. But the way this show is set up on my normal shows, it's more research involved and slides and things that have to be put together. So it's a lot more background work that has to be done prior to the show prep work. Uh, which kind of limits at the moment what we're able to do. However, Scientology Show Part 2 is still coming. I already have the data for all that. It's just, man, when you're trying to do two things and juggle and balance, it's a tough. It's tough. It's tough. Only so much time in a day. Only so, so much time for rest. And, uh, yeah, it's come pretty apparent. But that's why I at least do these. So I want to make sure we're doing things on both platforms at the same time. So appreciate you. And let's see. Yeah, we got some Mothman here. I only do, uh, I do only during after. Okay, this is a different conversation. Um, yeah. Okay, so we got some Mothman, Brandon Coast coming on in. Uh, let's see. Cowboys five rings. Uh, we're going for six this year, man. Period. We're going to do it. Cowboys five rings. Appreciate you coming on in. It's been a minute uh, since I've seen you. And Brandon Coast, yeah, definitely. We'll see you soon, man. This will be a rewatch. You can definitely check it out on rewatch. And I uh, do appreciate you coming through, though, tonight. And you have a great rest of your night, sir. Uh, Lil Cam 5-1, I appreciate you coming on in, Lil Cam 5-1, from Twitch. So we're broadcasting on Twitch as well. Thanks for coming in. Uh, let's see, who else do we have here? Puck Elf, Puck Elf, uh, the star of the last show, Puck Elf, came on. We had a great conversation. Thank you for coming on in tonight, Puck Elf. Uh, let's see. Um, I think that is it. Lex Diaz, Lex Diaz, thank you for coming on in. I do appreciate you coming on in. And, yeah, I see some conversation in the chat, so we'll see what we can do tonight. Not sure where this conversation will go. We had a great conversation tonight on art and um, <clears throat> the unspoken part of it, right? Because, uh, you know, I can't speak. Uh, I, I'm not I'm fluent in English and I can sort of speak Spanish some. But for two individuals speaking totally different languages, uh, I think art or pictures, visuals is the key to early communication or to two people getting on the same page. So um, I think that was an awesome way to kind of frame things tonight. And if you guys have anything that you want to actually go over, the ferret, thanks for coming on in. Uh, anything that's on your mind, let's go ahead and uh, get it up here. And, you know, I'm, I'll talk about it. We can talk about it. It doesn't definitely matter. So with that being said, Someone is talking about 9-11. I guess we could tell I, we do this kind of controversial depending on the angle that you take on it. There's a lot of parts of that that I, uh, you know, kind of that, that leave me with the uh, feeling where I'm just really not sure what to think about it. Um, some things I'm a common sense person. I think going with your with the logic makes a lot of sense to do that when you're having a conversation about these things. And there are some theories out there that I just can't buy or, or, or go with. So we can talk about that if we don't go too far down a political rabbit hole. Once we do that, we'll have to divert the conversation. Uh, but with that being said, we'll go ahead and tackle it because that's what you brought up. And that's why we're doing this here. So um, let me bring up the message that you put up as we get ready for this. 
So, welcome to the show says, guys, do you remember the guy who painted the 9-11 thing before it happened? I guess we could talk about that. Um, let me make sure whether we get the phone number out here. Because the call-in line is going to be 856-843-3444. But that's 856-THE-DIG. So you can either do that or you can actually come in through the link that's at the top of the chat, the StreamYard link. You can just hop right in on stage and join the conversation. Uh, welcome to the show. You brought the topic up. So you can join the, con the stage at any time if you want to further uh, what it is that you're talking about here. Saying, guys, do you remember the guy who painted the 9-11 thing like before it happened? Now, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Um, you further say this guy painted an image of the towers being hit by a plane a few years before the tragic event. So, okay. And so what is your angle on that then? I would like to know, uh, welcome to the show. Is it that you're saying this guy predicted it, that, he, that his prediction was that this would happen? And then in life imitated art and actually happened? Or are you stating um, that this was something that was pre-planned prior to the event? Because some people have that angle and, and, and you know, uh, without getting too far into it, I'd like to know which way you were going with that. So I know if it's something that's uh, worth talking about or if it's going to be too controversial of a subject uh so let me know about that and we can go ahead okay yeah so i can i can look into that so that uh, yes he predicted it is what welcome to the show says and yeah so we can go down the prediction rabbit hole because i think that's a good one to go down um it's when you look at deja vu and you look at um I think those are, you know, I don't know how you look at it, right? Because deja vu, you're like, wow, I recall that happening before. That's deja vu. So is that a form of you actually having the image before the event happened? Because if so, that means you're predicting, uh, which would be fortune telling almost, right? Predicting the future. Or is it something that uh, the other side of that where it could be considered uh, that you have lived this before, like this is something that has actually happened before. So I don't know how you guys look at that, but um, yeah, I don't know how you look at that. Where did he get the information? That That's what I mean. I mean, it depends on how you look at it. Did he really predict it or is this was this something that that on his timeline he actually lived through before? So I don't know. I don't know how you want to look at that. Um, building seven just fell down, nothing hit it. Okay, so here's what I would point to one of the things that we're really just having recently. And obviously, this people have already started a whole conspiracy theory behind this new thing the bridge, right? The bridge that the which was wild how it just fell down, but the bridge that fell down, I forgot what state that was in, uh, but the 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 container ship uh, hit it and the entire bridge just fell into the water at one time. So there, you know, with that being said, I'm glad that happened, quote unquote, not glad for the people that lost their lives, but for the whole conspiracy behind the whole 9-11 thing, right? Because I don't know that, that you go through that, you know, uh, I don't know that you take it that far in order to uh, set something up, right? So a lot of people are saying that they hit the uh, bridge in order to deflect from this other current event that's going on. And I don't, you know, I, I can understand where a thought process like that begins, but I really can't, I really wouldn't promote uh, a theory like that only because when other events happen that you can kind of line up with that, then you conspiracies are born for that event as well. So I think the bridge, I think true, if I were to look at it, that this ship just hit the bridge on an accident. Obviously, it knew they knew it was too big to go under the bridge. Uh, so they saw it happening as, as time. And probably what they could have done is shut it down way earlier because there's no way that you can't see this big, huge cruise or uh, container ship moving towards this bridge. The two, it's not going to end well. 
So, you know, I was I was kind of shocked that the whole thing came down. I didn't think that it would happen like that. But then what do you have to reference it against? Right. How could you even know how that would turn out if you've never had a situation where a cruise ship is rammed into a bridge like that? But nonetheless, like I said, the conspiracy theory started at that point, and that kind of lines up with the whole 9-11 with the Building 7 and why did it fall and how did it, it just fell perfectly. I think we I think we kind of lose um, we lose a lot by jumping in, immediately into conspiracies when things happen. Right. And that's kind of the stigma that uh, even though that's not technically a ufology thing, but I find that within ufology a lot, uh, we kind of jump into the conspiracy bandwagon if we don't first look at things logical. So I think there's a lesson really to be learned in having that conversation is that uh, everything isn't a conspiracy, even though, you know, depending on how well thought through the idea is, it's potentially something that's plausible. And I can go with you on that. I can go with you on something being plausible based on, uh, you know, certain information, but I'm not immediately going into to the conspiracy bag. I think that's a uh, not a well thought out uh, way to process information or to try to get to finding a point. Right. We could say the the um, you know, the, there's a million things you can make a conspiracy about in day to day. Anything. Just pick a topic. Right. Anything that comes up is newsworthy. There's usually a group of people who will attach on to it, especially if it's something that happens that we don't have immediate answers to. There's always a group of people that will step forward if no one has provided an answer to it yet and kind of fill in the blanks with conspiracy, right? And then now there, here's this 50 year legacy. If if the real, if the, uh, the complete truth hasn't been brought out about that particular thing, then the conspiracy theory supersedes any other sort of logical or rational thinking, right? And so I think you could apply that if you go back and talk about or look at most uh, things that have happened that immediately get conspiracy theories attached to those things uh, that you find out that with more rational thinking, that probably wouldn't be the first place that you stop with whatever the conspiracy theory may be, depending on what the issue or incident is. So I think there's a lot of that within ufology, and uh, I think that's kind of why we get a bad rap when we start looking at these things, right? Because we immediately, if we can't explain it, it can't be explained any other way. A lot of times uh, there's a portion of our crowd that goes into the conspiracy part of it. And, you know, even though some of those things are far-fetched and, and you know, if you talk them through, then if you talk it through and the only rational, you know, uh, explanations you can come up with after having a conversation is some of these conspiracy theories, then maybe you're on something. But if you haven't even thought it through and you're just immediately throwing conspiracy uh, theories at, you know, at it, that's where you lose me kind of because. I think uh, most things can be answered using logic and just being rational in thought process. And uh, you can tell if people have done that or not. I don't think that 9-11, they did that a lot. And, uh, you know, using common sense, there's other plausible ideas of how that could have went or why it happened. And uh, it could be literally just what it was, just a terrorist attack on the United States plain and simple, right, without the conspiracy theories. Um, but it's interesting and not really surprising, though, that you would have someone that that has stepped out and said, hey, you know, I predicted that because I think deja vu can be technically looked at as that. Because when I experienced deja vu and it's the thing that I did and I'm like, dude, that's deja vu. That means for me, that the thing that I'm talking about literally happened before, or this played this played out in my mind at some point in time, you know, bit for bit, uh, lining up with exactly what happened. So, is that a form of reading the future? You know, I don't know. It's hard to say. 
especially when we're at this level, we know we have enlightenment levels that we need to unlock. And maybe that's one of the things that we can predict the future. Maybe it's something that, you know, some of us are tapped in and can do. I think there's at least enough evidence out there, you know, to know that there are things that we can do that we don't understand. And it's very possible that one of those things may be being able to uh, read the future. And there was a time where I didn't feel like that. There was a time where I looked at um, a lot of the stuff, dude, and it was like, you know, I don't see this plot like how. Like, okay, you can just read the future. Okay, uh, you can just connect in this way to the, you know, and there's there's always been questions. And there was a time where I just didn't buy it, right? But then as the more and more that I've gone through my own experiences is, is and I make sure, and I've said this before, that I calibrate myself, that I stay calibrated because when you're in a position where you talk about this all the time, like I like I do, and and then with all the different people that you talk to, that have all these different opinions. So now my mind is, you know, now filled with opinions of a lot of the different people that I talk to, and I always make sure that occasionally that I do a check self check on myself to make sure that I haven't adopted some of those thought processes by other people and haven't clouded my own rational thinking, right? So I have to do heat checks on myself in order to make sure that I haven't done that. And I think it's responsible for a lot of other people who are in like a host like position where they run a, um, a podcast where you talk to a lot of different people because it's very, you know, when we talked about skeptics versus non-skeptics, there's a part of this where, you know, if you had don't check yourself and do those self checks that you can be manipulated into believing something. And if you look at some of these skeptics out there, that's some of their viewpoint is that throughout the conversation that gets had, that people end up being manipulated into believing in a certain way. So I always want to make sure that I'm not subject to that or I haven't fallen victim to that because, um, you know, when you hear a lot of different stories and perspectives, you know, it blurs. Sometimes it blurs from the people that I talk to. Sometimes I remember a point about something and won't remember who told me that because I've speaking to so, spoken to so many different people, right? So um, I always have to give myself a check, make sure that I'm still like open, middle of the road, like I haven't adopted any other uh, person's thought process or belief system in some cases. And uh, I think that's what keeps the conversation interesting and keeps it, uh, it keeps, you know, makes, uh, gives value to where the conversation goes, right? Being able to stay in that middle of the road, mind, open minded situation. So, you know, there isn't anyone that could watch the show and be like, oh, he's just a believer, or, you know, he's just buying into that with no proof of anything. You guys already know the way that, that I, when I bring something up, I bring the receipts. If I can't bring the receipts, I'm not, I won't sit here and, and try to stand on something matter of factly. Um, and, and it's really not about convincing someone. It's just being able to tell a story, show some evidence and say, hey, this was my experience. This is what I had and take it with a grain of salt or however, whatever, however you want to use the information is really all about making sure that the information is provided in the beginning, right? So that's what that is. But let me just go through the uh, chat real quick here. And just went ahead and went through the opening. Let's see. Ah, uh, see, like Joe Monk says, the ship was hacked. That was done on purpose. It was terrorism. I could go with you on that, Joe. I would just like, what is the thought process behind that, right? Like why to come to that conclusion, what evidence brings you to that conclusion? And I'm open to listening to what that evidence is, but, uh, you know, we have to make sure that we just don't jump to those conclusions without thinking about the evidence part of it. Um, <laughs> and here's the other thing. 
all the hoopla over the solar eclipse and then maybe that's something we could talk about too because a lot of people are buying into that there being something extra to that and i just don't know uh all the hoopla over the solar eclipse is covering up something look at my left hand while you're not looking at my right and we know sleight of hand happens uh we have you know more proof on other things where the government has definitely done that sleight of hand they're doing it with the ufo situation we know that for a fact but um i would need more on the solar eclipse uh, we had brian bowden come on about a week or so ago on after hours and he talked about uh how he had a vision about that april 8th date and how there would be something going along there i've heard other people talk about how uh national guard and things of that nature is supposed to be activated for those dates and people are wondering why uh, i don't have any proof that they have activated national guard or anything of that nature for this what appears to be uh the solar eclipse i don't see why it would be different than any other solar eclipse is really just the position of that planet uh versus uh, the earth in order to create the uh full eclipse and it happens in different spots around the world not all places get to see that but i don't know i don't know if there's enough there that we can show that shows that this is anything different than any other solar eclipse if there is it's receipts right 2024 is a year of receipts so we need to bring receipts we can't just say things without bringing receipts we can say how we feel and make a theory but you have to preface it with that like in my opinion or my theory about this is and then kind of go into what it is that you're saying but um you know without proof it's really hard to to stand behind uh just a, a guess or a theory a theory could be very well as wrong as right so uh, going through here, uh, welcome to the show. Tsunami nuclear wipeout, was that orchestrated? See, that's what I'm saying. You can go into so many different places with that where you just aren't sure. You just don't know uh, where that goes. And let me see, Joe Monk. Uh, and it's like we have a guest in the back we're going to be bringing up in just a minute here. Let me get current on the chat real quick here um tsunami nuclear wipeout was that works straight okay and then joe monk people believe in conspiracy theories but because sometimes there is a conspiracy no doubt no doubt that that's the case but if you've ever heard of the boy to cry wolf i think that's kind of a good way to look at it because um you know once a conspiracy always a conspiracy with some people some people immediately jump in the conspiracy lane on everything that happens and uh try to promote something that they have no proof of even and it kind of overshadows uh the real conspiracies that are taking place that are written where there's really something to to those conspiracies and it kind of makes it in a jumbled all in sort of bin where um someone from the outside doesn't know which way is up and they they can't focus on the real conspiracy because you have people that are promoting fake conspiracies and it's all jumbled in with the real so um i think that's really where our community suffers and uh kind of going down the list here welcome to the show uh i'm out there's a guy painted the 9 11 event two years before it happened yeah yeah okay i would love to see that if you could let us know where to find that, welcome to the show. We can bring it up and look at it. Uh, Lex Diaz, current Jamungle, uh, from Theories of Everything, said recently he got away from the UFO topic because the big waves in this field behind the scenes are bitter. <sighs> we could talk about that, too. I saw him say that, and I can I kind of understand where he's coming from, um, you know, and, and it's sad to see it. But what, what happens is, I'm a, I'll just say this. I think what happens when you allow the government to string you along for so long, when that's your focus, will the government uncover this? Will the government uncover that? Will they actually ever, uh, you know, amend this report? Will they ever say that they have the crash, the, the bodies and the crash retrieval? 
I think when you spend your time waiting on that and your focus is that, then I think that's where you can tire yourself out. And I think that's where a lot of people are finding themselves coming up right now because he's not the only one. There's other ones in the field that are starting to feel the same way. But if you notice the common denominator amongst those people are they are all in the when is the government going to tell us bucket, right? And yeah, you can get tired of that if that's what you're focusing on because they will never give you the data. So it'll never come. So yeah, you're going to throw your hands up at some point if that's the angle that you're looking at. And hopefully somebody out there can relay that message to them because we still need the, the top people on this. But if they're focused on solely on the government side of this, they're going to all get tired, right? Even the nation national news outlets that we're looking at, um, the Ross Coltharts, because they're spinning the same wheels and they're coming back and saying the same things over and over again. And I would be tired of it too, right? So that's where I hope, hopefully, people wake up and understand that the government aspect on this or the angle or the waiting that people are doing is totally a waste of time. And you too will end up in the Kurt Jamungle bucket uh, because they will never give you the data that you are looking for. So that's my view on that. We have a guest in the back that I'm about to bring up and we'll kind of rehash some of this stuff. But um, let me see here. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, people believe in conspiracies, Joe Monk says, because the government lies to us all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, because they've been caught in lies. So if they've been caught in lies, then that leaves you open to thinking that other things they say are lies too. And you kind of fill in those blanks with the new conspiracy theory. Um, yeah, 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 let's see. Who are the big wigs? And who do they think? They, I, I, don't, I don't know if I go into that. I, I can never buy the mainstream uh, conspiracy theory on 9-11. It just won't, it doesn't work for me. Um, but without getting too deep into that, let's go ahead and move down here, get closer to current so we can bring our guest in. Um, uh, let's see, da -da 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 -da. that's power, blah, 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 pilot. Okay, I'm just checking to make sure. Look, this is great. Da, 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 da. Okay. All right. Okay. So, yeah, this disclosure pro pro topic is very frustrating. That's the thing. When we, and, I'll, and I know this for a fact, right? When you're, and that's why I always say, quit focusing on the government. And it makes me upset when I see people only focusing on that or even giving that any light. Because I know for a fact that's the part of this conversation that is frustrating people and making people step in and say, where's the evidence? Where's the proof? Well, we don't have any proof, so I'm going to just spend my time doing other things. When I, when, when I take the approach that I take and kind of look on the humanity side of it, it excites me because I know we have evidence that will kind of lead us down uh, the path that we need to go on. And, and without the government's input, doesn't care what they, you know, not caring what they have to say about it, just the humanity side and the evidence and data that we have and these conversations that we have actually keep you going. If these media outlets like the Kurt Jamungles and the Ross Cold Arts, if they were actually focusing on the experiencer instead of what the government was doing or what their next step was, I don't think they get tired out. I don't think they get to a point to where they need to now step away from ufology. I think what it is is you're playing the government's game. And as long as you sit there and you play that, oh, look over here while I do this over here, as long as you do that, you will all end up in a, in a moment where you're like, forget this. I got to let this thing go. It's too much stress. That's because you're allowing them to kick you in the teeth every single time that they present something. You're like, oh, I trust you this time. This, this is definitely the time is going to happen. You guys are definitely finna tell us now. Yeah, when this next report comes out, dude, 
proof proof positive has shown you that that's not going to ever be the case. And if you put your eggs in that basket, you will also end up at a place where my buddy Lou Jimenez is, where he's just like, I'm just, ah. Uh, and then other people who now have, you know, been like, ah, oh, I'm just frustrated with this whole thing and kind of stepped back or stepped away, uh, quit focusing on the government. So with that being said, we're all, uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, we're going to go ahead and bring our guest in here. President Zaddy says, uh, Rob G, what if abductions are the likes of island people and no Diddy? Yeah, I mean, with that being said, if you know, we could go into the abduction side of this because I think the uh, I think with the abduction side, I think it has a direct connection to what David Paulides uh, is doing with the missing 411. I think there's the link is there, and I think the answer is there. I think they some they're taking us sometimes and they're not bringing us back. And I think the government is fully aware of that. So with that being said, let me go ahead and bring in the man of the hour, the man who joined us last uh, time we came on and gave a great conversation. Uh, none other than Puck Elf. Puck, how you doing today? Really well, brother. How are you doing? Doing great. Doing great. Just kind of flipping through some of these ideas and theories and i don't know if what if you have any uh outlook on anything we talked about so far but i'll hand it over to you sir i made i made a couple of notes as you were speaking sure yeah they're only short things i just have little interjections you know like yeah I'm yeah not i'm not the smartest man in the world um i've got a joke about conspiracies what's the difference between conspiracy in 2024 and the truth about six months, mate. There you go. Yeah. Uh, six more months. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've also got a note here about retrospective contemplation, is what I call it. Because I'm aware I've got like a load of mental antisocial illnesses. And I have to think about how did I do today? Was I a bastard or, you know, what's going on today? You know, like, and I hold, uh, try to hold myself accountable. I don't like to constantly just re-apologize, making excuses. I just say, yep, I know, stopped up, here we go. You know, mm -hmm. I'm aware of it, I'm trying. Self-reflection, so, yeah. Yeah, and it's like when you were saying like, when you think you know too much as well, it's like all that haiku stuff, the student and the master. Like when the master refuses to learn from the student, he ceases to be a teacher, you know? Mm. Uh, all I that like kind that. of yeah i like all that kind of like zen stuff too um and i got something about mm, community together equals oh yeah that's right community together equals food and that's what i mean like you've got so many sides to the community and so much woo attached to the idea of just a ufo like is it time travelers is it the government is it a conspiracy is it aliens is it a conspiracy about aliens? Is it a conspiracy about aliens by the government? You know, there's just so many layers to it, right? And yes. who gets to decide whether they're magical fairies and gremlins or people from outer space, you know? And so I don't know how. The, it'd be great if the community could come to... But there's just so many sides to it that are so opposed to each other's ideas to explain it. It's... I think the most likely explanation is that everyone's seen a whole lot of weird stuff and no one knows what it is. Right. UFOs exist, yes. Aliens exist, yes. But can I prove aliens are sitting in a UFO? No. People have said they've seen them do it, but I haven't, you know, and that's where I'm at, you know. Right, right. I mean, they exist camp. And I'm not going to walk around telling people I know the truth, you know? Right. No, you're absolutely correct. Uh, and and I think, and, and like I was saying earlier, I think what happens is, is that, uh, and, and it is disheartening, right? When you see some of these major platforms like uh, Kurt Jamungle, we've been depending on a platform like his and like a Ross Coulthards and others that have the spotlight right now to continue pushing on this issue. And when you start seeing people saying, okay, I've had enough, I need to step back a little bit and kind of 
and and I told I told Lou Jimenez that I did a show with him where we had a back and forth conversation, and I told him I think you were targeted to remove yourself from the conversation because you had something and in, in the moment that was galvanizing a movement with the whole with the whole uh, phone home things and the getting everyone together within ufology to send Congress this information like you had a movement. And that movement would be something that would be targeted and taken down. The government can't have those sorts of things going on. Same thing with the Kurt Jamungo, where you have a thinker, an analytical guy who is speaking from, is really trying to think this thing out, is what I gathered from him. And, of course, that's an outlet you may want to target as well to kind of dishearten him. But I think the it isn't solely on the government that is actually being successful in getting these entities out of the conversation, I think it ends up being more so the in, the individual themselves, like the Kurt Jamungles, who are focused so much on the David Grushes and the amendment that just came out. And is this now going to be the one that tells us about? And once you get wrapped into that, especially when you know it's a no win conversation, then yeah, if that's what you believe in, there's going to be a point in a period of time that passes before you get frustrated and say that you want to step back from the conversation. So I feel like, you know, we talk about it here and in, in over at Spaced Out Radio that we know disclosure is within us as humanity, and this is really what should be focused on. But if you pay attention to it, you know that the government from the beginning of this took us out of the conversation by saying, we could only go off of radar data and military data, and this is the standard. So if that's the standard, you can only get the information from military data from the military and from others in the government, which makes others believe that they have to focus and pay attention to what the government says and how they treat the issue. When And then obviously as time passes, those people get tired of being fed the same BS over and over again. We would all be tired if we all focused on the governments uh, being the ones for disclosures. So I'm hoping that we can get the attention of like a Kurt Jamal going like, man, stick with it, stick with the process. Just would you probably shouldn't be leaning so hard on the government for answers. So I don't know how you feel about that, but. I said, um, I said you brought something up during that. And I'm not so specific on the individuals, but it's, I think this Barbara Streisand effect is building up momentum. It's like at this point, the more they're denying it, <clears throat> when the videos are out there and they've clearly said, yes, these are our videos, this is our data, we don't know what it is, and yet they're saying, oh, no, nah, it's, it's nothing funny. It's, it's like the Barbara Streisand effect. The more you try and cover something up and sue someone to keep it off the internet, the more hype it gets. And it blows up, right? And I think that's what's happening now with ufology. It's like the the stuff that's come out already is like Barbara Streisand and it. The more they start denying it, the more normies are saying, wait, hold on, we just saw the thing though. And it, right. it, it's not turning people away, I don't think. I think it's putting people on our side that at this point, you know? I think it does when you can show that the government has lied, right? So when you have, like, like the only way that uh, the conversation with the government makes any sense to even have that is when you have people like a Corbell or someone who has data from them that hasn't been released and they can use that to kind of levy, you know, who has the balance in the conversation. That's the only way is for someone who is able to leak some information or who has some unreleased information that can go against directly what it is that the government is saying. And when you do that, when you're able and that's why I look forward to those things happening, but kind of get frustrated that they aren't happening enough because the core bills and those guys want to go through a, a controlled disclosure as well, because they want to make sure that they don't give all their data at once. Yeah. So well, that they become irrelevant to the conversation. It, it comes from both angles, Rob, and that's what I think. It's like there's people who will never trust the government because the government is involved in the conspiracy, hundred percent. And then you've got um, the the public that are the whistleblowers 
that do get discredited by the government. And so you've got the people saying, oh, the government's saying this, and they've got all the data. And then you've got the whistleblowers saying, no, we know what we're saying. And so the government and the public trying to both disclose a disprove a dis they, they discredit each other by nature right mm. if a whistleblower is coming out is against the government and then if the government comes out no matter what they say people will call it a conspiracy and and that's where i'm kind of at with this disclosure thing i'm i don't think any one explanation is going to be good enough right i think we're going to just have to get what we can get and we're going to need more after that even once everything's out we're still going to need more but then it will be out and maybe people can investigate it properly and that's what i'm hoping you know right i agree with you on that and and the way you know it's 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 put out there in a way you know, with the way the government is handling this, all governments, if you ask me, most of them up until this point, is is that they there's things that they could say about what's going on that has nothing to do with national security. There are things that they could allude to or kind of show that, that either say, yeah, we may have these things or these things aren't from here. And it's a simple thing. It could just be... Um, you know them admitting to them working on something and maybe you show something that kind of could that kind of backs up uh that this is a man-made item versus leaving the the question out there is is this man-made or not like there's certain things that you could probably say or you could probably do that would side one way or the other where you could say yeah i can't really tell you much but this is definitely something that we're working on or now we just don't know what it is. If you come out and say we don't know what this is, is not something that we're working on. How does that affect national security? And that should be enough right there for uh, the conversation to be pushed forward and at least give people the sense that okay, we're dealing with something we don't understand. You know what I mean? And yeah, it's like why it's they won't take that step. I think it'd be a good psyop to say you don't know what it is. So then your enemies are going to try and penetrate it, and you can do a penetration test on your new tech, right? That would be a good idea. <laughs> yeah, and see, and that's where, the that's where conspiracy theorists are able to jump back in and kind of add to the lore yeah. of why this isn't being released or why they're not saying this, and, kind of, and that's right where they want the conversation to be and where they want it to stay because then the results are, you have people who are pushing for this or pushing them for answers and who are now getting tired saying, hey, I'm tired of dealing with this. Yeah, circular reasoning totally annoys me. And you also reminded me something about technology that maybe we have. And it reminds me of a quote when I was growing up because I was born in 1984. And my mum was into UFOs and stuff when I was a kid. And I argued with my kindergarten teacher about this. And... Bob Lazar said back in the 80s, how do you make a craft out of one piece with no rivets or panels? Right. How does it have no um, joysticks, pedals or controls? And how are its different systems linked without mechanical interfaces and wires? And these days we've got wireless charging, information sharing, touch screens, and you can summon a racing game to Street Fighter 2 on your phone if you want to. True. You know, you can do a flight sim on your phone with a touch screen. And then we've got 3D printing in small scale. Sure, we're not printing UFOs at home, but who knows what they're printing somewhere out the back shop. True, true. And, and, and here's the thing. The thing is, is that if it's something that we've created, it is no secret because people are seeing it and they're reporting it. So it's not like, and that's what makes me feel like in, in where they could come in and say it isn't ours because why would we show you? For one, that would be the first question is why would we show you what we're working on? If you can answer that and make a logical argument for why they would show us, then let's go down that path. But I think the end result ends up being that if it's something top secret and it's something they're working on, we wouldn't see it. 
we wouldn't see 47 of them flying over my head in the middle of the daytime if this is something that the government is trying to cover up. And I don't think we'd see China letting off 47 of these things over a foreign country in the middle of broad daylight because then the jig is up. Now we know you're working on something. We know you have whatever this thing is. And now we're going to look further into that. So I think the fact that people are seeing these things should be enough proof to for the people who are focused on the government for them to know that hey this this definitely isn't government stuff because they would never show this in front of everyone this is speaking about um china and ufos and stuff going on recently in the world this is like really recently politically if i'm allowed to mention something about china you know like yeah, they got the, yeah. you know they got the taiwan thing going on right Mm -hmm. Well, because like America drove their boats past there recently, China conducted another Operation Fish Kill, which means they just like find all their old ordnance and dump like five hundred million dollars worth of bombs into the sea, saying blowing up the water, saying look what we've got. And they they're not targeting anyone; they're just doing a military drill, and they all get there on the shore, and they just all start launching shit into the water. And everyone just laughs at China and we call it Operation Fish Kill. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they just did another one. That's great. Operation, Operation Fish Kill 10.0. It's like, come on, man. You know, yeah. So, you know, with that being said, I think, you know, and the scariest part about that is, and if I'm a Kurt Jamongo, if I have that sort of leverage in, in the following then I want to, I, you know, it, and I wish I could talk to him directly. Maybe he watches the show. Maybe he doesn't. Who knows? Maybe he'll find it late night one night. But the whole thing is if someone out there knows him or could give him a message, it would be to don't give this thing up. You're in the moment. This is still one of the biggest moments in humanity's history. And if you step back and you stop the fight, then you are giving in to what, they're selling right and they're selling a bunch of nothing smoke and mirrors sleight of hand and they're not really addressing what it is that we know like we know it's not we think like a lot of us know because we've seen these things and so it's like what we talked about before like you can't going into the what if we're supposed to be the top nation the leader of the free world here in the u.s how you know it's obviously one of the reasons why they don't want to tell us that they can't protect us which is i could get that being afraid to do that but at the same time while you're afraid to do that i'll call it afraid because i think it's probably more sinister than that that it's not really afraid it's just they don't care for us to know and you know you you leave your citizens susceptible to abductions and all sorts of whatever these cryptids are doing, you're leaving your population susceptible to these things. And it's like, there's something else they could give, right? Like, okay, you don't want to come out and say, yeah, they're taking people and we know it. And yeah, these cryptids, they're weird, but yeah, they're out there too. Uh, you don't want to come out and have that conversation. You could at least have a lighter conversation that maybe doesn't expose everything but at least kind of confirms to people that, hey, yeah, maybe you should watch yourself a little closer when you're out there. I'm just saying, I'm not going to say why, but yeah, maybe you should carry an extra source of protection when you go into the woods. That's where we're going to leave it. Because that right there is enough for me to, to feel like you're telling me that I need to watch for something that we don't know about out there. And they could at least do that, right? But they won't in, even do that. In in Australia, yeah, I was just about to chime in. In America, you're a land of cryptids. Because you had megafauna and all this stuff. And we did, but we're a completely different continent down here. And we're less of a land of monsters and more of evil spirits, right? And we just wear magical talismans. And that kind of protects you rather than like a firearm. You know, that's like the Aussie way. You know, we got we got magic. <laughs> right so that that's my and i'm just disheartened by this right i'm disheartened by it because i talked to lou you know El, not lou elizondo lou jimenez who used to do the, the ucr unidentified celebrity review 
And when we initially talked, this is before you started the uh, go, you know, doing the show against uh, ufology. But we had a really great talk, and in that talk, you know, it was like the early stages. And he told me he was like, he said this to me. He said, "There's going to become a day where you're going to feel the same way." about what's going on. You're going to see one day that this has all been this big thing and that you have invested your time into something that wasn't worth it. And you're going to have this revelation one day. And I told him, I said, no, I'm not going to have that because I've had a sighting myself that lets me know that this is a real thing. So that's the thing that's, that would never allow me to be on that side of it. But if you haven't had that, like a Jamungle, I'm not sure if he's had a uh, signing himself, but if he hasn't, then yeah, and even people within ufology who haven't had sightings but believe there's something there, they're also getting tired too. So, what happens? So, we start with the Kurt Jamungle who says, Yeah, I need to step away. He says this publicly, like, you know, I need to take a step back. And other people now who have been maybe on the verge of thinking like that or feeling that way because they're focused on the government, now they say, You know what? I think I'm gonna step back and and have and take a step back too so now what have you done you've affected the entire movement of the awakening process and getting people to actually second guess what's going on and making a stance like okay i'm gonna step back which the government loves the powers that be will love to hear that but it affects our movement and how do we stop that from happening how do we stop kurt jamungle from taking that stance we try to talk to him but then there's, like I said, there's other people out there who are on the brink of, yeah, I've been waiting for the government to do this. And they keep stringing me along, man. I'm tired of wasting my time with this. I have other things in life I need to focus on. So I'm <coughs> also going to step away from UFOs. And I think that is one of the things that will take us away from the okay. government exposure. But we understand they're not going to give it to us anyway. So the, the message is why even wait on them? Yeah, I can I can tell you why people started pulling out real bloody quickly recently. Hamim Misan with his freaking Peruvian mummies all over the news, and it totally just threw a wrench in everything. Right? That's what I think it is. I can see that. I can understand yeah. that. I can understand that now. With that being said, yeah, I can get that. Man, and so I guess that I don't know. That's why it's hard to say because how do you combat that? How do you combat that? Uh, uh, you can't you stop how you respond. You can't yeah. fight stupid. They'll beat you at their own game, man. Exactly. You're right about that. You can't fight stupid. So you can't stop a Jaime Musan from coming out and dragging these mummies out and trying to claim that they're real. That's what they say, by the time a lie runs 10 times around the world, the truth just woke up and put on its boots, you know? <sighs> so, I mean, but the point, the problem with that is, is that this is, uh, for us on the humanity side, that know this thing is real, that know we need to be progressing that way towards getting this out. We, as humanity, as our group, we have to figure out how to even combat that. So, Combating the disinformation campaign is going on by the government, and then also combating situations where Jaime Musan just brings out alien mummies on, you know, on a whole group of people, and kind of guilt by association sort of thing. Where it's now, it's like, should I even believe you because you're kind of affiliated with this guy, and he yeah, brought out fake mummies? Just it's just because it was related to the subject, and like I say, there's so much different sides to this woo that don't agree with each other and it'd be great if everyone could come together but who gets to decide what's real we've got people walking around with their crystal mind magic saying they're downloading age alien consciousness and i keep asking them make me a perpetual motion machine or draw me a plan and i'll make it show me and yeah. there's just nothing there so I'm with you on that, Puck Elf. I mean, I'll say that's that's one of the more controversial things within our community that, sh that truthfully I think should be questioned, man, and brought out. I'm not going to I'm going to say this. I host, obviously. So I, I'm not going to sit here and say that there's ever a person that comes across that I just say, hey, that's BS. No, I'm not name dropping or flagging anyone off. I'm saying. 
No, but you make a great point. Alien knowledge, write it down and show me. I you want make to a see great it. point. Now, That's I, it. That's I will that. say that too. You know, if I you've got alien too. knowledge you're downloading, throw it on a piece of paper and show me, even if it's a bunch of random gibberish. I want to see it. I would say that too. I agree with you, Coco. Yeah. The way you put it, I agree with that. But the way I would put it to kind of be more politically correct would be, which is what I've been saying all of 2024, which is 2024 is the year of receipts. Like, try to please bring receipts. Mm -hmm. So that by saying that, that says exactly what you're saying. And it's like, dude, we need more than just stories to be told. The stories, experiencers know that those are valuable. But to convince those people who are on the outside, they don't just want a story. Those people on the outside want more as much as you can give them on that on that particular incident. So it, it behoove us to be able to report more things. Out. Yeah, I'm down for hearing out all the stories, man. But you've got to take them as a collection and look for light things they're all talking about. And is this a copycat thing or and then you find the unique cases that is completely weird that has baffled the mind and you got to account for them too. And, you know, like, if you ask 10 people who robbed the bank and you separate them early, they'll give 10 different descriptions. Right. If you let them talk together for five minutes, they'll make up a description of a random guy that looks nothing like him. Right. You know? yeah. And so it's, it's, and with that being said, right, so that, that goes further along the path of us looking within us to try to figure out a way that we could all help bring this message to the populace. And the thing that, that, that blows my mind is you can have things out there like aerial schools and Westall 66 and a few other examples where those things should be the things that seal the deal for this conversation. And you, you end up seeing that there's a way for people not to take it hundred percent seriously. Like really? Like, well, then what else can we bring to the table? So it makes it disheartening. But that's only when you're trying to bring one thing up to convince a total populace. Whereas if we all figured out a way to bring all of our stories to the table and said, yeah, not only aerial school, but we have Westall. And not only that, we have this person experienced that. And then you start to put together that picture board where it shows how these things could be connected why these things are important and we start doing that like we need to put that together and i don't think we've done that we have our stories individually and that's why i always talked about on the other getting platforms together because our stories sound cool individually we get stories every night by people we interview but at what point do those things get put in the catalog where we could all reference back to this stuff and kind of start putting that stuff together. That's why I applaud like a yeah. Cheryl Costa, a Cheryl Costa, uh, Preston Dennett, and kind of people is who Cheryl take those the, things and put them all together. Is Cheryl the lady that worked with Stephen Greer on the Disclosure Majiggy? Uh, Cheryl worked on... Amy, um, Alien Girl's friend. Oh, uh, is that Cheryl Costa? I'm not sure. I know uh, Cheryl's been uh, deep yeah. in this. Translated, yes, yes, yeah, Cheryl yeah, that Foster, one, yeah. yes, yeah. I just call her Smarty Pants Cheryl, <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's on you top know? of it, man. Yeah, she, she's got all the facts, bro, you know, yeah. And that's why I can appreciate the work that she does and then the work that Preston Dennett does because these are all and the work that New Fork does, and and for the most part, Move Fund, even though they're more secretive on what they do with their data, but. I could tell you, you can go to newfork.com right now, N-U-C-F-O-R-C.org or com, one of the two. And there's a database of images and sightings from everyone across the globe over years and years. I was able to go there and kind of validate my own sighting because there are other people who had the same things and they listed those things there. So we just need more places where the data is oh. Central. What, was that what was that website again called, Rob? I'll try and look it up. And yeah, New Fork. It's a National UFO Reporting Center. Okay. It's N U F O R C. National UFO Reporting Center. 
and they have everything. Uh, they have the craft in different the categories. I've got it. I've got it. I can paste the link in the chat. And actually, so. yeah, let me bring that up because I think yeah, that's important. If you're in a range, I can paste it. I've got it. Yeah, I, I can't do it from here. Let me see. But yeah, no, don't, don't ranch me, man. I'm, I'm crazy. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, <laughs> self reflection, Puck Elf. I like that. Self reflection. Let me see. I'm self aware. And I was about to say, I might pop off, man. Um, or. Yeah, I might go have dinner again. It's been great chatting. Yes. Appreciate you coming on in. And I'm going to go ahead and go further with the New Fork thing. So I appreciate you uh, joining in the conversation. And that's where we'll, we'll pick it up. Yeah, well, thanks for hanging out and being my friend, man. Like, um, All I just day. want to jump in and break the ice so other people can jump in now. Because if yes. Tracy Elf can jump in and say what he wants, anyone can, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate so, you, Elf, man. Thanks for coming on in. All right. No worries. Good night, everyone. All right. I'll be in a chat on the side, though. I'll still be here. I'll just okay. be doing dinner. All right. Take care. All right, guys. So, yeah, this is obviously the I can't. Yeah, let me try to bring that back up here. Uh, it's not that one. So is it this one? It's not that one. I'm trying to share it here. Give me just a second, guys. I don't see it. Okay, very strange. Firefox, seven more pages, so not that. Close this. Actually, let me do it like this. Give me one moment here, guys. New Fork is uh, an important tool. If you haven't ever been to New Fork, um, I would recommend that you do, especially if you've seen something strange and you're not sure what it was. New Fork is going to be a place where you can kind of go and cross-reference your data uh, to see, let me see, is this it? Yeah, here we go. Let's see if that showed up here. Okay, so yeah, New Fork, right? So this is the equivalent of MUFON. They, they, they've been around for years, this uh, website. And it uh, gives you, you know, you're able to see different, uh, sightings and, and in a lot of cases images that have been submitted so it's essentially just like a MUFON but the difference is the data is open and free for everybody to go sift through and view no membership fees needed or anything and this is uh, one of the first places I went after I had my sighting now initially here's the thing about it right so I would think that with my sighting I thought okay these things are going to be there instantly like there's going to be uh, other people who saw my sighting and they're going to post it there. It should be there within a few days and we'll be able to see it there. I went back months later and people still hadn't submitted any of the sightings. It took me into the following year, so probably six months down the line when I decided to go ahead and file with MUFON. Then I go back to National UFO Reporting Center and that's when I see the image of the craft that was taken in Colorado, two states over, that happened the next day after my sighting, but it wasn't loaded or reported into their database until six months down the line. So you'll have that. So some people will come in the day they have a sighting and they'll go to these websites to see if anyone else reported. But what you'll find out is those sometimes don't get reported immediately. People sit around and kick the idea around for months on if they're even gonna report it to begin with. But when you go and you look in here and I should be able to, I'm gonna bring up something here. So this is the data bank and they have this listed under different things. So you can do index by event date. You can index by state or country. You can index by shape of UFO and then date posted. So what I ended up doing was I, I did event date, I think, first, and then I did each one of these separately to kind of narrow down, uh, and then I finally, I went through a lot of them that did not match my sighting, but then I ended up coming across some that did, so 
Uh, let's just take a look at one real quick. Let's go off of shapes because you'd be shocked at look, at look at how many different shapes are reported, right? So you have, and let me make sure that this is what you guys see too. I don't think you see that yet. Let me see. So let me stop sharing that and share this one here. Give me one second, guys. Uh, let's see, share. Wow. Okay, it's not showing. Okay, so I got to do it like this. Let me go to the other browser, guys. Give me one second here. Okay. All right. So data bank. We're going to go into that. And then, yeah, so, okay, now you guys should see it, the breakdown. Okay, you can. And so we're going to go shape of UFO. This is one of the things when you look back at the UFO report, right, where I think the I, I feel like the reason why they weren't telling us what the shapes were and they redacted that back when they did a couple years back is because if they start telling us the shapes that we could cross reference with the site like New Fork like this and kind of find that, yeah, people have been seeing these same things all the time. Look at this. Unspecified, unchanging, chevron, cigar, circle, cone, cross, cube, cylinder, diamond, disc, egg, fireball, flash, formation, which is one of the ones I looked into for mines, and we're able to find them there. So formation, uh, light, orb, other, oval, rectangle, sphere, star, teardrop, triangle, and unknown. So you look at that, and those are a lot of... Uh, shapes even outside of your normal conversation or your own verbiage, right, that you may have talked about with others, right? You know, when you look at things that have been reported, usually it's a disc or it's an orb or it's uh, listed as like a sphere, translucent sphere. You know, it's one of maybe three, four crescent shape, four or five main ones that you hear about. But when you go to this website, that's at least 15 different uh you know, shapes that have been listed there. So you get, it makes you think because when you only look in that same box of shapes that a lot of net, a lot of people talk about, you may have seen something that was outside of that. And then you don't know how to really process it or categorize it because it's not one of the things that other people are used to seeing. But that's why you get into this site. You're like, you know what? I saw something that kind of looked like I did see something that kind of looked like a, uh, let me get back to it here, like a flash instead of a orb. It was more like a flash or a formation. So let's go into formations to kind of just look because this is how their breakdown is. So they have it listed. These are all under this uh, sightings that mention formations, right? And so you can link to all these. And media, if you look to the far right here where I'm pointing, these are the ones with the Y. These are, yes, pictures are included. So those are the ones I usually focus on. So this one is uh, March 3rd, 2024 in Anaheim, not too far from me. Said three objects flying in slowly in a straight line formation below cloud cover, then directional maneuvering, vertical maneuvering. I'll tell you what I find in most of these is if they're daytime sightings, they usually end up lining up with what I saw. When they're nighttime sightings, they usually show or people show them as like orbs, which that's why I always have the question in question if the things I saw, if they were seen at night, end up being orbs. And, you know, I think under formations, you kind of see one or the other. So looking at this one, this happened at 1030 at night. No, yeah, so it was reported, so 1030 at night, so it's probably going to be, a, or no, that's 8, uh, I'm bad with military time, that's 830 at night, still should be probably dark, so you probably will see an orb or something along those lines. Yeah, so something shining, right? So this is the New Fort website, and those are the two objects. 
They just did this now where now you can play videos before you didn't see videos. So I'm surprised this is new. Uh, they've just added this recently. So because some people have submitted videos, but you couldn't play them because they didn't show listed. So let's take a look here and see what they showed. All right, so that's pretty uh, compelling there. Let's play it again. Right, 11 seconds of video, and that's all they needed to submit to move on. Uh, they said three objects smaller than a helicopter, larger than a consumer drone, emitting greenish, slowly changing to black to red, back to green similar to aircraft navigation lights which is something i like to point out too i think they know how to mimic our uh the the lights the pattern the blinking pattern however colors were a bit off and not blinking with slow aura of light change back and forth almost like trying to simulate aircraft navigation lights this is exactly what i say and i had in this first time i saw this sighting but i feel the same way that they try to simulate our uh, navigation lights, obviously to blend in because that makes sense. But some people, you know, in our field and you follow you will write off uh, a sighting because it blinks in a specific pattern. They're like, no, that's a UFO wouldn't blink in those or FAA pattern strobes. And that doesn't mean that that means it's mundane. It means potentially that whatever this, Craft is has obviously understood that it needs to mimic what it sees in the sky to try to go unnoticed or to be written off, which, you know, you have people in ufology that will, because of that one thing, write it off completely. So you think about how much data we've thrown in the trash because people will immediately jump on the bandwagon of because it blinked in a specific pattern that it isn't a UFO. So that's number one but not quite getting it right right so almost trying like trying to simulate aircraft navigation lights but not quite getting it right some dark form structure was visible to the naked eye but not in my photos these three objects were flying slowly uh aircraft speed at about 2,000 feet above ground level estimated just below the cloud ceiling they were in a straight line formation traveling from south in the north from the south in the north direction made a gra gradual curve turn east with the lead object following. Then the next object, then the third object, they then appeared to hover in place briefly before moving vertically out of sight above the cloud ceiling. Flight Radar 24, which is what I used as well, I think that's a great tool that people should download and have on deck to reference their sightings. Show no aircraft with public ads being the area of the time. Many people were in the immediate vicinity but none appeared to notice or be interested in the objects. I took a short video, however, could not find them on my phone screen while recording. So I thought they were not being recorded and stopped taking video. Reviewing the brief footage later, I do see them come in and out of frame as I move my phone around trying to find them on the phone display. And that's, I'll kind of end that there because it just, a lot of data there, right? This is, a, if you saw something weird, this would be a great place for you to reference that maybe you saw something that night or you saw something that was similar. So going on to a different one, just to kind of get an idea, this is later at night. So I want to see something early because I always look for things that might have been uh, close to what I saw. So you guys remember what I saw. They were these white objects. Okay. And these two photos from a camera that detects motion and took these two pictures less than two minutes of each other. First picture shows a very clear blue sky. Second picture shows round semicircle in the sky. Zooming in on the semicircle shows more of the object's shape. Okay, we see that there. I don't, you know, I'm not going to place judgment on anyone's uh, sighting, but okay, we'll move to the next one. Uh, let's see. Let's look for something early in the day, more in the daytime here. Let's see. No pictures. Uh, four lights. Okay. Let's keep going down. All right. Saw formation of six UAP in Southwest Michigan. This is at about 
six twenty five. Uh, maybe we get some. Let's see if we can see what this shows. Okay, I don't see it. I don't see it here. All right, going to the next one. Um, let's see. Find something early enough. That's the thing. They're always, uh, they are always, let's see, 16 shiny objects above El Cajon, California. And, and I want to see this because I think, yes. So this is, look, guys, we found it, right? So on the sighting, this happened uh, just a few months back. Now, you guys remember my sighting, and this is going to line up uh, with what I saw, right? In the daytime, same sort of things that I'm about to show you. This is what they said about it. Uh, formations, color silver, estimated size, don't know, viewed from land, direction from viewer north, angle uh, of elevation 80, uh, closest distance, nearly straight up, very high altitude, unknown, very slow, lights on the object. 16 shiny objects above El Cajon. While having my trees trimmed on Sunday, October 8th at 10.07 a.m., broad daylight, my wife noticed, and this is the same with me, my wife noticed a bunch of shiny flying objects. If you remember from my story, my girl came in broad daylight. She came and told me she saw a cluster of objects and the sun was shining off of them. So she said, they say here, I immediately started filming I captured one and a half minutes in iPhone quality video. I wish I gave it my full attention until they completely disappeared. There were no sharp movements that I could tell. My wife thought they were drones. They were very high altitude and seemed to flash a little. After the video, I checked back a few minutes later. The large group seemed to be dispersed. The few remaining visual objects I could see were further west than previously spotted. So I can already look at these and tell that this is along what uh, I had actually seen. So let's take a look. I believe I've seen this video before. Yeah. So these are the same, and I, I did. I did a video on these. These are the same things I captured, dude. They're in the sky all the time. What? Why are they there? And and why wouldn't the media want to pay closer attention to something like this, right? If these things aren't from here and they're in our sky like this in broad daylight, this should be front page news. This should be something showing on every news outlet. These are the same things I captured. Different day. I did mine in August 2022. This is October 2023. So that means they're there different time. They're always there. They're there. And they're in these sort of numbers. This is 16. I had 47 in mines. And they were in Mexico by the hundreds. So what in the hell are they there for? Why are they there? The same way these are shining off the sun is how mines were. Amazing. But there's a purpose for those things. Like, why are they there? The first one I picked, there was a daytime sighting, and it lined up exactly with what I showed you guys on my sighting, right? And I've said most of the time, this is what I've been able to determine, that if it's in daytime and there's a formation, if those two things are so, that is generally the same things that I saw. So what that says is that for sure in the daytime, there are formations of whatever these things are in our sky. And there's no reason to believe that those things are man-made, especially if you have a number like that, and then they all disappear at the same time like mine's did, right? So I, th that's something we could put on our board and say, this is a real thing. What is it? 
And then why is it up there in the middle of the day? Not caring if it's being seen or not, it's just there. And what are they doing? More, It has to be more than just playing. I don't know what you would want to say they're doing, but um, they're there, right? So, and I haven't, I need to add my sighting to New Fork. I haven't done that. I've only done MUFON so far, but it needs to be added because obviously there's other incidents where these things are showing up. But let's see if we get, and I haven't done, I'm, I, this is on the fly that I'm on this website. So I haven't been here earlier to find ones that didn't line up. That was the first one I went to that was in the daytime and it was exactly what I, the, the things that I took an image of. So, you know, I think this is uh so forget all that. Oh, do they exist? And waiting for the government to tell you that I got proof, dude, I got proof. This shows you that these things are real. There's no doubting what uh, what we're looking at. And three formation Tic Tacs. And I think these things are what maybe they get uh, when they describe Tic Tacs. I think sometimes that they may be talking about these here. I mean, once again, and there's no real way to zoom in on this, but it's the same sort of behavior, dude. Same sort of behavior. Let me, um, I saw one V-shaped craft that flew in front of me. Let me just see. This is early enough in the day. This is supposed to have a video or a picture, but it doesn't. Uh, okay, saw one V-shaped cra craft that flew in front of me that was, Clearly six round orbs in a V formation, like mine's. It looked like it came up off the ground, a flying V. It turned right, then left very fast. As it flew in front of me, I could clearly say, see that it was six round flat saucers flying in a V formation, then it was gone. Okay, I wish I could see it. But that just gives you an idea, right? I'm just looking at formations because that's what I saw. Uh, yeah. Let me see. Three known, unknown objects hovering for 10 plus minutes. Let's take a look at that. Okay. That's a little weird. These are black objects. Still strange, right? Because I think these might be along the same line as what it is we're seeing. I wish I could see this one because this one has this object sticking out of the bottom. And I'm telling you, the things that I saw and recorded that you just saw on here are usually in a formation. That's why when we go back to the gimbal video, the one of the most famous unsolved videos is the gimbal video. And in that video, the audio says there's a fleet of them and they're going against the wind. You have to, you can go to this website and look under fleets and formations and see what type of fleets and formations have been captured. And the only ones really are either nighttime orbs or the things that I filmed. That's why I feel based on that research alone and cross-referencing the information that the same things we just looked at in those pictures and, and the thing I showed you that I captured on video are all likely, very likely, the same things that they talk about in the gimbal video. So if anyone ever wanted to wonder, because it's like, oh, the videos are always black and white and they're always grainy, and where's the real picture? Go look at my sighting. I'm pretty sure that that's exactly what they're showing in the gimbal. But we're not connecting those two dots, right? And we have the data to do so. We have the data to show what gimbal might likely be. The real life version of what gimbal might likely be without the filters and all that. There's someone within the government that can corroborate that information. That, can, that knows for sure that these things that you see here in formation are the same things that they have captured or seen on gimbal. So it's about putting those 
dots together. We already have the ability to do that, like I just did for you right now. But it's more so of us doing that on a larger scale with the other data that we have, right? There's more data that we've taken in on different experiences and different sightings and different. So now it's time to sit down with that data and try to put those pieces together. Why is this data important? How does this data corroborate with this story over here? We Now it's time for us to start actually putting that story and that picture together. That's what I mean when I'm like, we have the ability to bring disclosure. We have all the data. This is exactly what I mean. This website, our sightings, our experiences, common sense, logic, all points to some of these things, you know, being able to say for sure with 99% certainty what some of these things are and kind of validate their, their presence and that they are there and they're there all the time. And it's no more a question of uh, it might be this, it might be that. No, we've kind of proven that whatever it is is anomalous, whatever it is, it's always in formation, uh, whatever it is, is able to disappear in the thin air. All these facts that we have on these particular group of objects. And then with that, with that data, how can you take that to a skeptic? How does a skeptic even begin to tear that apart? If you we've already done the footwork to align other cases where this has shown up and kind of bring the data like that instead of just walking to the table saying, hey, I saw something, it was weird, and it was it was aliens, but we haven't brought any data to the table to kind of validate or back that up, right? So that's what needs to change in this field. That's what we have to change because the sad part about it is, is that, you know, there's a lot, there's a good portion of our crowd who have been tricked into feeling like they need mommy daddy approval from the government to confirm that what we're seeing is real. When we just sat here for what's been what 15 minutes and kind of pointed to at least a couple, two, three things that uh, that kind of you know bring us to a conclusion on at least some of this stuff that what some of this stuff is real. They haven't even done that on the national news level yet. Like they could do that. One of those investigators could sit and do what we just did and do a spot on uh, a story on why some of these things are weird and peculiar, what some of these things are. There hasn't been a national news outlet that's done that yet. And that's the story that needs to be told, I think, on the national level. And uh, maybe we'll have a breakthrough where one of us gets interviewed or where we're able to have a viral video that kind of breaks out and uh, kind of forces that conversation to the surface. So I've just been talking, right? Because I think it all makes sense. And let me go ahead and get back to this chat, though. See if there's anybody who chimed in on any of that. Sometimes I just go on the rants, but I think it was it was totally uh, cohesive and needed in pointing that out right there. So, um. Okay, Tim Mogman says, uh, look up rectangle sightings in California, Rob, you'll find mines. So I'm going to go ahead and do that uh, next here, Tim Mogman, see if we could pick. What was the date on yours, Tim Mogman? Because uh, we can we can break it down by date as well. Date reported or date the sighting was, and we'll be able to find it. Yeah, Les Diaz, question is, what are they doing here? Yeah, you're right. That's the big question. We can prove they're here. Right. But if you if what I just did only took a few minutes. But if you leave it up to the general national conversation, it's like, where's the proof? Everybody's like, where's the proof? Where's the proof? And I sat here in 17 minutes and showed you how certain things line up, why, why they line up with other things and why it makes sense that this is that. And they haven't even answered those general questions that that are that we just sat here and answered on a national level. And that we need those questions to be answered on that national level so that it makes sense to everyone else. Because I think if we present what we just presented to people on the national level, that I think a lot of people walk away from that like, whoa, okay, that's pretty compelling. So where are these things at then? So government, if you are using radar and, and you have, you've captured these things before, what are they? And that would be the next question to happen that would, if you wanted the government to be involved in disclosure, 
would kind of force them down a path of where they have to explain now what these things that we validated are there, what they are, right? So it's pretty mind blowing, dude, when you think about it. And like I said, if we have, if we need that one moment where one of us down here that get it gets that national attention where we can tell that story nationally and bring receipts with it you laugh it off if you want to on a national level you know what i mean uh news reporters or producers who are considering running the story like now nah, that's crazy it doesn't no let's bring the facts right because i think it's a lot more than the interviewing corbells and doing these other interviews random interviews that you're doing this helps a lot more than just having those conversations so we got to figure out how to do that maybe i don't know i don't know man I can only do the content and hopefully it gets shared by one of us that that showed that brings the light to someone else that maybe then we could have the conversation. But anybody, if you're ever on social media and you're getting tired of the way the conversation is going, consider tagging some of this stuff that we're talking about to these outlets. Right. So we can take the conversation to them because. As long as you leave it up to a Corbell, he's going to want to tease his next thing. He's not only going to want to take the conversation so far until he's ready to release that next thing. Then Ross Coulthard, uh, which I love these guys, no shots at these guys, but Ross Coulthard wants to hold on to the story or the being able to give you information on where the spaceship that was so big they had to build a building around it, like won't even give you hints and clues because then the jig is up for them instead of them prolonging the story and kind of dragging it out it's like okay why talk to those guys national media when you could talk to other people who could literally start putting the puzzle together for you you know what i mean and kind of showing you why you should be looking further into it and why this is something that you should be concerned about because between these stories that you do and these reports that come out Families go into the woods on vacation and put themselves at risk. People go to sleep with their guard down at night uh, because the realization that people are being taken isn't really being heeded by the population. So, you know, if we want this to change, we have to literally figure out the way to make it change. It's not going to happen sitting back and just twiddling our thumbs and kind of waiting and wasting time. It's not going to happen that way, man or ladies and gentlemen and just kind of getting impassioned about it but i think you know this it makes sense so hopefully we'll uh hopefully we'll get the spotlight to shine down on us but like i said once again the government has made it a rule almost in the media i guess is abiding by it that experience or uh input doesn't matter because we could be deceived by what it is we saw and as long as that narrative goes then they're going to run with that and they'll overlook us every time. So we have to figure out a way to uh, bust through that because it was masterfully laid out there by the government that uh, you probably shouldn't listen to experiencers. And you ask yourself, you wonder why, is because we have the freaking experiences to kind of close the deal on this thing, man. So, you know, and I'm just talking, man. Let me go ahead and go back here into the chat, dude. It's like, oh. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. And and it goes back to that. Yeah, the question, why are they here, man? That's We could be further along in this conversation. Like, I wish, and I'll keep doing this till the day. You know what I mean? When, when news outlets are looking for someone to interview, I have a signing for you, dude. I can show you a video that's better than the gimbal video. My video, in my opinion, is better than the, what we end up seeing or getting from the gimbal video. We see something that kind of turns a little bit. Yes, yeah, definitely anomalous and it's strange. And we should, if there's more data to that, we should have it. But I can show you a video that actually shows what things are and kind of it makes the conversation more compelling and takes the conversation further because not only are we bringing a video, but we're also bringing, pointing to what, to how this thing may, you know, where this is validated at. 
and, and why this should be, why you should pay attention to this. Because I think once they have that and they start going down that rabbit hole and trying to do that, I think it opens the conversation up more. So it's up to you guys out there, you know, uh, the army of you guys. And that's why we all have to get together as a group in ufology because it, it should be flooding the news outlets with this information so that they do pay attention to us. You know what I mean? So if you know anybody, out there, I'm just going to say it, right? I have receipts and I'm more than happy to bring other people with receipts to the table. And uh, I think, you know, and I, 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 you know, the Corbells and those guys, like I said, no shots at them. The, the got love for whatever they were able to do to help move the needle. But I think they, even they know, the Corbells and the, them know that these sightings and things that we have on this lower level will blow them out of the water. Any of the jellyfish UAP or any of these other things that they're releasing, slow releasing, you know, over a period of years, which really we could probably accomplish that movement within days or months if we really if we really have the right approach to this uh, situation. So, and I think that's why we, and I'll go back to here, and when we started with conspiracy theories, and this could be a conspiracy theory, what I'm about to say, I'm not going to put any, any, um, I'm not going to put a lot of value into what I'm about to say here, but I will tell you this, the video that we did two weeks ago, by the time we ended that show, by the time we ended that show, we we're over a hundred views. Usually we get about, you know, we have a few hundred subscribers here and then we usually get over a hundred some odd views for the videos that we do here, which is a pretty decent return, a pretty decent percentage, right? So for whatever reason, and I've never seen this happen at all, but the last conversation that we had, uh, we had Puck Elf on here and the whole thing we talked about, that video went up to like a hundred and, and some people are going to be, you know, who get thousands of views and I'm like what are you guys talking about but I saw a video go from like 120 views which usually is where it'll rest at and it'll kind of stay there not really it went from that which it happened within like a day of, of it come airing and it had went down to like 70 views first it went down to 90 then it went down to like 70 views within a period of like three days, three or four days. So we're talking about 50% of the views that were already there initially end up being taken away on the YouTube side. And I've never seen it before. I've looked around, I've asked people to try to see if there's other situations where that has happened. And, you know, uh, some people gave some explanations that could be plausible, like, um, you know, but we've consistently had that. So I know it wouldn't be like bots watching, you know, or running up the numbers because usually that's kind of where that happens at. But I swear we, you know, I watched literally out of 120, I saw like 50 of those views get, get removed over the period of two or three days by YouTube, which is almost 50% of the total views. And then it's kind of worked itself back up from that point. I just don't see the bots and the, we don't, we're not big enough for bots and all that stuff. So I don't see that as being a thing, but uh, I think when you start touching on these real subjects that, I mean, what we're saying here, and it's not just because I'm saying it, it's because of the thought process that we are having by just talking to each other and bouncing ideas off each other. I think it's kind of like, uh, okay, if this thing gets a little bigger, like this could be trouble, what they're doing over here, because they're really just speaking the real. And yeah, if this stuff got out to the national news or just on a more larger level, that what they're saying here could kind of shift the conversation. And I think that becomes to be a problem. Now, that's a conspiracy theory, right? Doesn't mean that it's true. It's just a, it's just a little weird, right? It's a little weird. And I think uh, some of the things that we say on this channel end up being, you know, if this were to be viewed on a larger level, I think some of the things we say, uh, if the government knew and, and this was affecting them in some sort of way, that they would probably be against the things that we're saying. So 
Maybe the algorithm gets messed up because uh, numbers get taken off. And they, I don't know. I don't know, man. I'm just telling you what happened. I don't know why it happened. I'm not going to hundred, you know, jump right into conspiracy theory on that. But it's what happened. So take that as you will and kind of go with it. But uh, anybody who watches, like, we don't know. It literally, one of the few people that do watch uh, the show, uh, I'm just hoping one of those people may have some influence in uh, maybe have, getting being able to have this conversation on a larger stage. Because I think right now, if you, if, if, I, if you booked me, on some sort of broadcast with someone else i think the angle that we come that we talk about here and the proof that we bring to the table which is important in logical thinking i think uh would be effective to the overall conversation man so yeah that's my ramble that's my that's my uh, two cents to the thing, man. You know, I always got to get one in and only do these when I think we're going to have that sort of conversation, something that kind of moves the needle. So um, definitely glad that I was able to do that. Uh, let's go in the chat here. Uh, Lex Diaz, the UFO too big uh, is in Egypt or at some ancient megalithic site. He never said the building built around was built nowadays. Oh, man, I like that, Lex Diaz. <laughs> excellent. That's an excellent perspective there. I like that. Yeah. 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 I like that. It could, it literally could be something else. But my whole point is with that is that, dude, like, give it up. Like, the games and the benefits. And here's my thing, right? I, I think, and people think differently, but I think that when confirmation comes that a lot of our things that are ingrained and the things we normally do, I think those things change. So I think even things like uh, NDAs, I think to me, I think post-disclosure, if it's a, a situation where everyone has woken up to the fact that this is going on, if you ask me, I think NDAs become ineffective at that point. I think they are void on the other side of disclosure. And so I want that to be out there because people who don't think society will change and think things will go on as they currently do going forward will feel like NDAs will still hold weight on the other side of confirmation. I don't think they will. I think you're in a totally different place on the other side of disclosure where NDAs probably lose their value and uh, a lot of the structure that's there that says the ethical considerations like whistleblower protections and then source protections by investigative journalists, I think those things are out the window too. I think that, you know, because it, be it becomes a totally new game. So the reason why I say that is uh, to let people know that maybe for if you're coming with the proof positive data and you have it and you can bring it out, do it, do it. Because I think the results of that, I think an NDA doesn't apply to you on the other side of that. Now, I could be wrong on that, but I think for the most part, if, mo if all people have come aboard with what's going on, I think they applaud you for coming out and being a heroic person coming out on the side of humanity. And I think an NDA would probably doesn't apply to you or the people wouldn't stand for that at the very least. So I think that ends up being the same with the uh, source protection that journalists, you know, their code of honor that they have. I think that kind of goes out the window, too, when we talk about being on the other side and having confirmation. I think sources and that whole loyalty between source and uh, and. Um, the reporter, I think that goes out the window too because it's something bigger than you or it's it's something that affects the world uh, that you have the information to. And, you know, once again, I think it falls into the something that humanity stands behind. We haven't been through this, so this is speculation at best, but um, I really feel like that's the case. And I think if people who have the data 
uh, can kind of look at that and maybe consider that as, wow, yeah, maybe it might be different once I give the information and maybe no NDAs can't even be enforced at that point. And I think that might be the case, right? So, and that's me not trying to be selfish saying, hey, put yourself at risk and just for me or for my well-being or for my family or for humanity and just saying, hey, you should sacrifice yourself. That's kind of me just saying, hey, if you're in a position to sacrifice, just at least look at it and think about how what the end results could be. Yes, things could go business as usual and you whistleblow or you come out with you break an NDA and yes, NDA is enforced. You're in jail. OK, one aspect or you come out with the information it changes humanity. Humanity hails you as a hero, uh, stands behind you 100 percent of the way. And in the democratic country like the United States, you wouldn't be persecuted. OK, that'd be another angle and maybe, maybe not sort of thing. Um, and you just have to be able to look it through and say, hey, you know, I'm willing to roll the dice and take that risk to take us there. But, um, yeah, it's kind of hard to say, man. And let me see. Ah, it, then the Alien Girl 111 was saying the same thing, similar about her channel recently. YouTube doesn't like us. And I think that's what it is. But I don't care, man. And I know they have uh, the ability to strike down or censor or do any of that stuff, but uh, this is one of the risks you take, right? So if you sit down and talk about what really matters to humanity and a, a, a entity that has the authority over you to silence what you're doing, then you know you're doing something right and you just do it somewhere else, right? You do it, you have that conversation somewhere else where it can't be censored, but... Um, yeah, yeah. Puck Elf says, ha, ha, ha. So Mothman says, that's very obvious, Lex Diaz. And then Mothman says, at least our community circle, Lex, many of us are connected outside of YouTube. Right. And and just, you know, and I'm doing a show, and I keep saying that because I keep having to delay the show because it's all the putting stuff together. But I swear, I promise you, the Scientology show is just as good as the first one is going to wrap and i need to just do that so we can wrap up that whole conversation but the show i have set after that which is the government what's the plan for the government post disclosure i think you'd be surprised at some of the ways that this could turn out and i'll just say this right here just to kind of give you a hint at what it is we might you know some of the angles is i think um it's possible that that uh if the word were to get out and you know the vast majority of people understood that we're being visited now daily by these things and they're in the sky in formations like we saw and they're just all over the place and they're not caring if they're being seen in the daytime they're showing up in the daytime crystal clear you can see what they are that that uh i think that they you know, I think democracy changes, truthfully. I think maybe it's a situation where uh, instantly martial law is activated, where it's like, okay, um, you know, no more of this conversation. And you've already shown, saw that they've drawn a line in the sand about trying to get in, them to say anything else. They're like, no, we're not saying anything else. We don't care who tries to make us do it. We're not going to do it. They've already done that. So the next step, if disclosure came another way and they didn't want it to come, whether it's through us or however it comes, aliens just showing up or whatever may happen, that I think, I feel that, that we may see a different side of the government because if the stuff hits the fan and it's a situation where, okay, the secret's out now, does this mean we lose power or whatever? The, I think they lock everything down in that instance. I feel like they turn the military against the people. And this is just theory. It's not saying this is what happens, but saying that it's a possibility. It's plausible that those governments, even though they scream and holler democracy, that, that overnight that thing turns into a dictatorship where imagine this, imagine tomorrow, and I'll kind of, where are we at? We're almost at two hours. So I'll kind of start telling off with this. But 
imagine tomorrow the information comes out or we have is catastrophic disclosure, however that comes, not through the government, obviously, but if it comes through just these things showing up in the sky or uh, we're able as our own humanity group able to put enough together to kind of show to everyone else that this is real. Imagine the internet being turned off. Imagine that key, something you don't even consider because it's there every day. It's the way we all communicate right now across the globe. There are so many people in here and that watch this show and, and are over at Space Out Radio After Hours from across the globe. And it's because we have the ability to connect to the internet. And that's how we are rallying the movement to try to bring disclosure. Imagine if that key gets turned off and you have no longer internet capabilities or it's controlled the content you're able to actually use on the internet, like some communist countries, right? That limit what their citizens are able to view or do, you know, using on the internet is monitored and, and the only certain things you're able to take a part in. So imagine that being the reality for everybody on earth in order to stop the secret from coming out. Like they're going to those ends by saying, okay, we'll just shut the internet off. Or okay, you think you you think you're you're a free thinker, or we'll just kind of change the way democracy works and kind of make that a little different. If you don't think that's a possibility, then you probably just aren't thinking. You know what I mean? Because we've already seen martial law uh, get put into position for the silliest of things, including what they're trying to talk about for this uh, solar eclipse coming up. People have theories, and I don't know where they're getting them from. I can't, I can't say where they're getting these thoughts from because I don't. I just heard this, but they were saying um, uh, that that uh, military is being activated in certain areas um, to take the streets, right? So, some if that was true, which I don't know if it is, then it's just an example of the way that that democracy can turn into uh, a dictatorship kind of overnight. And then your connection to what connects you to the rest of the world, the internet, shut off overnight. Things that are very possible. If you've had your internet bill ever come up and you've had your internet shut off, you know the reality of that being turned off from the rest of the world instantly. So imagine that and then imagine not being as free as you thought you were as a citizen and that happening overnight. That's the next way to control uh, disclosure if it means the powers that be lose power. I know that's controversial, but I'm going to be the one to say it. And if that's a reason why my numbers uh, get messed with, then it's just, it is what it is. I'll just be one of the people that trying to take that, but they're not going to stop speaking the truth. So with that being said, Ross Dog Broken Spirit, thanks for coming on in. We appreciate you. And uh, Tamak Man said, I know you said something earlier. Uh, Said you DM me something, right? Let me uh, check my let me check my uh, Facebook for that. Okay. All right, I got you. I got you. Let me see. There's an image. Okay, and so I'm gonna bring this up, Tim, and let us know what we are looking at okay you can see it all right so what are we looking at here tim you wouldn't mind saying let me go ahead and come current on the comments all right what are we seeing uh here tim i see the light off in the distance it looks like it's pretty big I think it's obvious that we're looking at this thing in the center, this UFO or whatever this is sitting in the center of the screen. That is Goldie, the golden orb of Anza. Oh, okay. Is this something that's reoccurring that comes up often? Because that the next thing I would do is go to Newport and look at uh, objects 
you know, orb-like objects to see if anything matches. Yeah, no, Ross Dog, uh, Broken Spirit, you're right about that. Phoenix Lights are probably the most concrete evidence. And I say that, and that's the visual evidence that we have, right? That's on video. Um, but if you, you know, I think right along with, you know, Phoenix Lights with it being so old and grainy, I, I'll pop my own collar and say, I think, I feel like what I've captured is pretty freaking epic. Like if it was taken with the same, and, and that's why I was hoping there would be other people that also caught it because I think a daytime Phoenix Lights is undeniable. And I think what I caught was on the level of a daytime Phoenix Lights, man. And I'm not just tooting my own horn or I was blessed to be in the position to capture what I caught when I did and to have so many things taken off the table, which would be some, uh, cloud obfuscation or lighting or, uh, you know, just other things that it could be. And it was the perfect situation to be able to rule pretty much everything out. When you have Phoenix Lights, which is an iconic sighting, and one of my buddies, um, Tom King, was one of the ones who actually filmed the Phoenix Lights. So I'm totally behind that being one of the most epic sightings out there. But there are other ones, too, that, um, you know, I think are those what I was saying, White House or UFO landing on the White House lawn moments. Phoenix Lights is for sure one of those. And there's a few others, right, that are ones that should be able to make it more than just a conversation. I think if we have Phoenix Lights today, um, that we would have, it would be more conversation behind it. But then you'll have uh, those who come right behind and say, well, look at this training video, the military release. They say it's uh, it was a, it was a uh, flare exercise. The, the UFOs that are seen at night are usually glowing craft or orbs or whatever you want to call them. And those forever will be as long as they have flare exercises, unless they behave in some different type of way, those will always be written off as flares, right? We know better on the Phoenix lights, but the skeptics will always hang their hats on those being flares, right? And it kind of obfuscates what it is that we know about that sighting. So, you know, I think that they're, you know, it's just a shame, man. It's really just a shame. I think we definitely have had enough sightings and enough ones that are valid enough for us to kind of be like, you know, even with Phoenix Lights, you know, I think we have a good bundle of authenticated sightings that are enough that should lead most people down a path of at least looking into it more or feeling like, yeah, there's definitely something to that. And um, yeah, so that's pretty awesome to my man. I uh, appreciate you uh, sending that one in. But they're out there, dude. And it's like, the more, like, this is why I said, I used to have a co-host on this show, uh, my guy, Mateo, still buddy, great buddy of mine, but his business is taking, taking him into doing other things. Um, I used to, uh, feel for him and I've had this conversation with him because he's one that was really on the side of these things are real. I know they are, and he has never had a sighting in his life at all. Not even the slightest bit of anything. So for him, it's a, I know these things exist, but I just haven't seen one. And that's a tough place to be in. Excuse me. It's a very tough position to be in, being that you know these things exist, but you have never experienced it yourself. And I just so happen to be blessed and lucky enough to have seen both sides of that recently. Because my sighting, first sighting, and only sighting, happened August of 2022. I was already doing shows at that time with a different show. So I was already like a co-host on a different show talking about this subject because I had a belief in with the Lou Elizondo thing that came out in 2017, kind of turned everything for me to be like, whoa, okay, these things are here all the time. But I still hadn't had my own personal sighting to where it was checked off the list for me 
that, man, these things are here now, right? Then I have my sighting and it kind of brings me into that fold where I can sit with others that have sightings and be like, man, yeah, it's crazy. They are really here, right? But I still have friends like that that still haven't had that sighting. So I'm like, uh, and it makes me feel bad for them. But, you know, I think the more people we can get on the side of, yeah, I saw something, uh, then I think that kind of helps further move the conversation about. And like I said, that's why it's tough having these conversations because I get so emotionally wrapped up into it because I want to see the needle move because I saw what was there. Right. And I know that this is one of those pivotal moments for humanity to change the way things go for our future. And one of the only ways, as I said two weeks ago, you have an asteroid impact, you have a nuclear situation or uh, the current disclosure process that we're going through are the three things that I could think of that would be chances for humanity to readjust our path and where it is we're going. And we technically could be in a nuclear situation, probably not likely. Um, and then the uh, asteroid impact, which could be a tomorrow it happens, but it's unlikely we're monitoring some of the sky at least. So the one thing that it, out of the three that is like literally in our face right now is the UFO confirmation. And that is something that we can help play a part in and it, live in this moment that helps us kind of redirect our path like this is there's thousands of years have passed that's that's hundreds of lifetimes and thousands of lifetimes have come and gone without those humans having a chance to change the trajectory on where it is that we go and we are so lucky to be living in a current time where we do have that choice where we actually have that choice or ability to be able to do something to affect our trajectory for thousands of years going forward and for so many generations that you can't even count that our choices and things we're doing in this moment will decide or help decide or help move or navigate where it is that we go as humanity, which is huge. We can't leave that up to anyone else. We can't leave it up to the government to say, hey, look over here while we do this over here. Can't do that. And then we can't let some of our strongest proponents or people that speak on this subject or are trying to bring it to the national eye. We can't let those people get worn out either. So maybe I'll uh, I know, you know, who am I? Right. But I'll still myself. I'm the type of person. Some people say call it pie in the sky, sign kind of the way that you look at humanity coming all together. That can never happen as pie in the sky. And also uh, kind of look at it like, OK, you reaching out to a, a Kurt Jamungo. Uh, why would he listen to you or why? But the whole thing is, is that you don't know if you don't try. Right. So it, at the same time, I feel like humanity can come together and do this regardless on if people say pie in the sky. I, how do you know if you don't at least try to make this thing happen, which is what I'm doing now. And then with the Kurt Jamungo or someone that is stepping away or is at that precipice where they haven't decided, you know, they, they feel like they want to make a change is I would reach out and send them a note. Maybe they read it. Maybe they don't. It says, Hey, maybe stick around and kind of give reasons why. So I'm willing to do that on behalf of humanity and maybe it gets to him and, Maybe he kind of changes the way he looks or however we can affect this. Right. And I think at the end of the day, that's really what it has to be about. There's no point in having these conversations if these conversations aren't going to move the needle in some way or form in a positive way. Like there's no point in sitting here for what, two hours and over two hours and having these conversations if they're not going to move anything. These conversations aren't for me to hear myself talk. I've been a uh, music musician. I've heard myself talk and hear my voice recorded and uh, for years, 20, 20 years at least. So it isn't because I want to hear myself talking. I'm just passionate in this subject and there's nobody else doing it. Right. There's nobody else doing it, taking it to 
as far as as we're trying to take this conversation, I just don't see it. If you could point to me another person out there that is trying to take this disclosure, this confirmation conversation to that point to post disclosure, right? When when you know we get to refigure this thing out, show me because I want to link up with those people so we could be doing the same thing together. You know what I mean? Let me know. And then kind of share this stuff with this is to some people late night jibber jabber. But I think some of you definitely understand what the value of having the conversations are. And it'd be cool if you share this stuff with other people who may not be in the loop or who may just be coming into the loop. So, um, you know, we could have this conversation on a larger scale because I don't have to be the one on the news broadcast delivering this message but at least maybe someone we know could do it or someone in this audience watching maybe you get the chance to go on one of these news national outlets they want to interview you and you kind of get to put this perspective on the stage and if that can happen i'm happy with that as well so uh let's see ross dog broken spirits came back and said uh the Cass Landrum incident is probably my favorite. Unfortunately, the UFO, the UFO negatively affected the health of the three witnesses. And of course, the U.S. government refused to help. And I've been told enough stuff about Cass Landrum where I'm kind of, I don't know where to feel, how to feel about that. And only because you have the Lou Elizondo where, which I think is also another wrong thing we could talk about, which is the five observable five observables right so did this thing exhibit any of the five observables which ends up being the bar that they put in 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 place to judge whether you should be worried if something is anomalous or not now if we look at cash landrum uh if we were only going by the five observables i don't think that it exhi exhibited any of those right so for the people that that stand on five observables needing to be there one of the five observables they will immediately say okay it didn't display any of those so it's not anything it's probably something from here we don't need to worry about it which i think is the wrong perspective to have i don't think just because uh an object doesn't exhibit one of the five observables that it still isn't something to be looked at right instantaneous acceleration why would you need that on a planet that's only so big these things have shown they can go from eighty thousand feet to right above sea level in less than a second the only type of time you need a speed like that is if you're traversing a galaxy or traversing from one star system to another and that's logical thinking but that what makes me feel like these things actually do travel through space from one location to another because we they've exhibited a, a high rate of speed that could not that wouldn't be feasible to use on a planet, right? It has to be something that where they're, when they're going that fast, it has to be for some long term tra or uh, travel that they do, which would lean more into these things being from another planet traveling directly from one place to another. But you could say what you want about that, but. You know, um, I think with that being said, that uh, with these, you know, I, I just think that it is so weird to be an experiencer and know that these things are real and then have these conversations like we're having now and then contrast them to the conversations that are being had on those larger stages. It's not even the same conversation, dude. It's two different things you know what i'm saying we're like oh these things are here why are they doing this to us why are they here and on the larger stage they're just like uh are these things from here or are they in the whole thing that they try to wrap you up in uh with the sleight of hand stuff so uh, you know maybe one day this conversation will get shifted i'll keep doing what i'm doing whatever my part is however valuable or invaluable it is i'm gonna keep doing that and uh, I just hope that everybody else, when you're out there in the world and you're having conversations with people who don't tune into this kind of stuff, who have never done this, 
that you are not afraid to bring uh, this up to people. And there will be a time where I will be on the streets uh, asking these opinions from people, just random people, walking them out their daily life, right? Just kind of seeing, kind of probing or gauging where people's head is at, people who would never usually try look at this stuff. But I think if you look at the uh, results for the poll that they had over, I think it was over last summer, where they, they had done two polls. One thing, one was right around the NASA conference or whatever that was, where they came out and said nothing to see here. They had a poll then, and then they had a poll, I think, after Grush and Fravor and um, Graves testified in front of Congress. They did the same poll, and the first time it came up, like 57% of the population polled believed that the United States government was holding back information or hiding information in regards to retrieve UFOs, which is pretty decent when you look at that because it was like 57%. And then it was like uh, more like 23% uh, believed that it's not possible the UFOs could be here. And then like 20% said they didn't really know or didn't care, something like that. They polled them a few months later and that number moved from like 57 percent up to 63 percent of the population being polled saying that they believe 63 percent of population polled believe that the united states government was holding back information in regards or hiding secrets in regards to retrieve ufo craft and the number had gone down from 23 percent to like 20 percent of the population that believe this is impossible so what it showed to me in that moment is that more people than we realize we're just being segregated most there's more people than you realize that believe that this thing is happening if you're looking at those poll numbers it would show you or lead you to believe or understand that the skeptics are likely the minority in this conversation so it's likely that the skeptic opinion that none of this stuff is possible or these things aren't that that they are actually the minority but if you don't go off of those numbers and you just look at how it's being presented to the public on the national stage you probably be under the assumption or feeling that uh that we are the minority and i think that it's not that and i think probably part of that is is that some of the people polled may have had their own experiences but have never come out and said it which i think is a big problem and that could explain why the disparity there in the numbers why it seems like we're the minority but when polled we come out as the majority overwhelmingly and it leans into the conversation we had with a few of the guests we had recently where it's like do you know it's probably likely more likely than not that most of us have had some sort of experience that we either haven't mentioned or said to someone or we haven't come to grasp with it ourselves and had that conversation which is kind of segues and is beautiful because that's why this show exists this show is here not really for me to sit up here and talk like i've done today but it's here for you to come in and talk about your sightings and when we started this show off um some months back we have people who had come on stage like Puck Elf did today uh, and come on and for the first time in their lives, come on, came on this show on a call in and were able to talk about things and experiences that they have had that they've never talked about to anyone else. And that's still what this show is about. So I want to kind of, you know, it's good to have these conversations because I think you understand the reasoning behind why we would want to talk about this but that you know i always get that and i do this on after hours so i talk all those hours and then come here i don't really come here to do more talking i come here to hear from you and to hear your experience you know and to and it's always rewarding to hear yeah this is the first time i've told anybody about it and that's what this is for you know what i mean to get more people comfortable into saying what they saw whether it was anomalous or not can be determined later, but to kind of get it off your chest, you know what I mean? And be more comfortable in having the conversation with other people in an open forum. 
you know, whether it's at the club or at the bar or wherever you may be, instead of saying, should I say something about this? Feeling comfortable enough to just be like, hey, guess what, guys? I saw something strange. It went like this because you might find out in that group of friends that you normally wouldn't talk to about this, that at least one or two of those people had something similar to you. And then that's how this thing grows. And then they go to their other group of friends and they have enough courage to, to talk about that with them and find out. And it kind of spreads and you see how that would work. And uh, yeah, that's why we do this. So without with, with that being said, uh, what we're going to do, because I think we, we've done pretty good tonight. We'll go ahead and get this cut off right now. Um, yeah, and I just want to thank everybody for coming on in. So let me go ahead and get this wrapped up. Let me get all this stuff off the screen. Because uh, I think, yeah, once again, even though it was me talking a lot of the time, I, you know, like I said, I do, I do uh, calibration checks for myself because I want to make sure even in the moments where I'm talking that I'm not still taking a middle of the road approach to this whole thing. And as we're talking through it, because it would be a disservice for me to sit up here as a person that has the platform to talk and to have a biased opinion on how we should handle this. So I always do a recalibration for myself from time to time to make sure that my perspective still comes from a middle of the road approach. And even when I have all those conversations with the interviews that I do with people who have different mindsets and approach things different ways. I make sure I don't take any of that home and that I keep that middle of the road. And I think you guys should too recalibrate yourself occasionally and make sure you haven't gone all the way left or all the way right on the conversation. Make sure you're still in that open-minded middle because that's where you're the most valuable to the conversation It's when you stay in that sweet spot. So, as we, as I digress, as we progress and keep this thing moving, uh, what I want to do is go ahead and bring this up on the screen because we do this every single time. And let me do this before because I want to show you why we do this. Uh, it's very important. We do this. For this reason right here, we do this for the positive progression of humanity, right? So that means every one of you out there, so everybody you see down there, all those different races, religions, all those people are from different walks of life. They don't all agree on everything, but this is humanity. This is how we have to come together. If you're seeing this, this is how we all have to come together, stand up and be accounted for and be able to have this conversation. Uh, like I said, this is the reason why we do this show. There's no other reason to do it if it doesn't move the needle for humanity. So with that being said, I just want to thank everybody for coming on in, you know what I mean? And having a like-minded, uh, outlook on this and kind of being able to bump ideas off each other. Thanks for Puck Elf for coming on in and, uh, and, and chiming in. I do appreciate you, especially breaking the ice. And yeah, maybe next time we have some other people come on stage and talk about this. Like you got to look at it. Sitting back and listening to the conversation is cool. But where are you having the conversation where you could progress it? This is the place for you to do that. So hopefully we get you guys to do that going forward. I definitely want to thank everybody for coming on out and coming from the after hours. If you haven't subscribed, Please consider doing so. We're trying to get this thing to grow. Share this show when you're ready to have a conversation with the skeptic. Let's kind of make sure that we keep it open-minded. Outside of that, definitely thank you guys for coming. You have a great rest of your night. See you next week in the after hours, and you guys take care. Later. <laughs>